happy Sabbath, everybody. It's good to be here. Good to see you. Um, one of the things that uh, happens when you prepare a talk in church is you learn a lot. And then you start trimming the things you learn so that you won't be up here all day. So, anyway. All right. Well, this is the verse in the New American Standard Bible. And it is slightly different. And you see right here, it says the smallest letter or stroke shall not pass away. The night of my discernment is snow, love, and surrender. These are words that have helped me have a better understanding of the Bible. It seems like kind of strange but it has opened up my mind to a lot of things. I'd like to start with a little exercise, <coughs> so I'd love it if everybody would participate. Uh, this is for the people that have their Bible, or they don't have an electronic device with them, you know, with an electronic Bible. I'll get to the electronic people in a minute. So, if you take your bulletin, and get an ink pen, What I'd like you to do is put your name in the upper right hand corner. Okay, now let's tear that out of the bulletin. Cold. 
And I know the last one, I think I got that one down pretty good. Melted snow, water. Anyway, I'm so glad to be living in Florida. Years ago, when I was in the military, I was stationed in Jacksonville. And I think it was in February that it happened. It actually snowed. Snow didn't stick on the ground, but it did wind up staying on top of the cart. And that morning, the kids were out making snowballs and throwing snowballs at each other. So they could probably take and get two snowballs off the hood of a cart because it was really thin. But that's the only time I've ever seen snow in Florida. Words can be so much fun. Okay, I'm going to the beach and my two children want to come too. <clears throat> two, two, two. There are three spellings of the same sounding word too. So we should really know what words mean when we use them. <coughs> Luke 24, 13, King James Version. And behold, two of them, behold, two of them went <coughs> that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. How many people know what a furlong is? That too. Ricky does because he helped me put this together. I didn't know until I studied it. How about a score? How many people know what a score is? We should have a lot of hands on that one. Abraham Lincoln used it in the Gettysburg Address. <coughs> four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the uh, proposition that all men are created equal. Four score and seven years equals 87 years. And that was from the time of the Declaration of Independence. A furlong is about an eighth of a mile, or 22, uh, 220 yards, and a score is 20. So 3 times 20 is 60, and 60 times 1 eighth is about 7 and a half. So Emmaus is about 7 and a half miles. So when we read that, they walked from <coughs> Jerusalem to Emmaus, and then they went back after dining with Jesus. So that's about a 15 mile walk. They had to be really excited. Okay, what about the word love? Is the word love in the Bible? It is, all right. John 15, John 21, 15. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Peter said, I love you. 16, Jesus said, do you love me? Peter said, I love you. 17. Jesus said, Do you love me? Peter said, You know that I love you. Did Jesus say, Do you love me to Peter? Well, the answer is no, because Jesus didn't speak English. The Bible didn't start in English. So let's look at the word love. <clears throat> I found six words for love in the Greek language. Now my pronunciation is probably not going to be right. I thought about taking up Greek. And if I ever get the English language taken care of, I'll look at another one. <clears throat> Manai. That is the desire to own or lust. It sounds a lot like coveting to me. Eros is an emotional love. Phileo is brotherly or friendly love. And that's where Philadelphia got its word or its uh, motto, the city of brotherly love. And then we have Strogi, which is motherly love. And I found out that it says that this is the most devastating kind of love in a marriage relationship. Nobody wants to be treated like a child. Then we have Cali Torres, best friends. 
And then we have agape. I love you because I choose to. It looks to me, and I think we should have four of these in a marriage relationship. Number two, number three, number five, and number six. Of course, there are times where our emotions aren't loving. And if they're not loving, I'm not sure that I could call that person a friend at that time. And if they're not a friend, they probably wouldn't measure up to a best friend. So then we've got arrows. I love you because I decide to. I got you. I misspoke what I said. I did? Okay. I'm sorry. Agape, that's I love you because I choose to. So Jesus said agape to Peter. Peter said phileo. And Jesus said agape to Peter. And Peter said phileo. And then Jesus said phileo. And Peter said phileo. I was surprised when I looked this up. You might want to look it up too. Don't take my word for it. It wound up giving me a totally different view of this story in the Bible. But this is interesting. So now I know that not everything is just love, love, love. All you need is love. It actually means a lot more than that. Okay, so that takes care of snow and love. What about surrender? What does surrender mean to you? I don't know if you know it or not, but I spent 20 years in the Navy. And I guess that kind of influenced my interpretation of the word surrender. Napoleon and the Austrian generals in 1815. You notice one group has their hats on and the other one doesn't. How about April 9th of 1865, Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant, Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. I was looking at that and that was interesting. <clears throat> that was a hundred years after that. I was a junior in high school. May 7, 1945, Nazi Germany surrendered World War II. The Japanese representatives arrived on the board, aboard on the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. September 2nd, 1945. Has anybody ever been on that ship, the USS Missouri? Okay, if you ever get a chance to, right where they're standing, is a great big round plaque and it's covered with plexiglass and it commemorates the surrender. This wall right here where these guys are standing, it's got all the pictures of the surrender in there. CIA officers helping evacuees up the ladder to an Air American helicopter, April 29, 1930. 75. Uh, April 30th, 1975. <clears throat> This was on a ship. These are the last evacuees that were able to get out. Iraqi soldiers surrendered to an American position during the Gulf War in 1991. The definition of surrender. To yield to the power, control, or position of another upon compulsion or demand. Surrender the fort. Or to give up completely. To agree to forego, especially in fear of another. 
yield to power. We would say in the military, live to fight another day. Think about this. As long as I've been a Christian, I have heard that I must surrender to God. There's even a definition, if you go on the internet, of Christian surrender. <clears throat> to surrender in spirituality and religion means that a believer completely gives up his own will and subjects his thought ideas and deeds to the will and teaching of a higher power. So there we are. We've all surrendered. We're all robots. We're all marching in line. That doesn't sound like Revelation 3.20 to me. Where Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. The word surrender is in the Bible. It's in there six times. Twice in 2 Kings and four times in Jeremiah. And what does it mean? This is what it means. It means give up completely. If you're having a hard time swimming and you yell for help, then someone throws you a life ring. Is that surrender? Doesn't sound like it to me. So what is the life ring the Bible sends us? I've got a few verses here. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So the devil will flee from us, and the Lord will lift us up. That sounds pretty good. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, and that we will obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we can go boldly to the throne of God, and we can have rest. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and a sound mind. To those who are led by God's Spirit, are God's children. So God gives us power and love and a sound mind. And we're part of the family of God. I'm so thankful for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Because we don't do any of this without guidance. I'm not seeing anything in this at all that sounds like live to fight another day. But we do have some warnings too. James 1.22, it says, Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. <clears throat> to, know what to, be, to know what we must be doing, we must be in the word. Now, we all got in the word at the beginning of this talk. Uh, this talk. So, you're all are in the word. So we need to read it. We need to know what it says. And how can we do this? We do this by putting on the armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And that's something that you can read and study. You know, that's a, that's a good place to start because, you know, when we think about talking to people, sometimes it's a little scary. Remember where we started? We started with the exercise. And for you, those of you that did it, you are in the Bible. We need to be in the Word of God. 
this way we can be doing the things that God is leading us to do. I hope that you notice I've been saying, we and us, we're not in this alone. We are the family of God. Jeremiah 23, 35 says, you should keep asking each other, what is the Lord's answer? Or what is the Lord saying? Are we fishers of men? My point is, when you see a word you don't know, or a word you're not sure of, or maybe a word that you read in the Bible all the time, but you don't use it when you're talking to somebody else, you should look it up, know what it means. You might be surprised. So at this point, should we go out and charter a boat so we can go fishing for men? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this Sabbath day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all those that have interpreted from one language to another that we can know the meaning of your word. Please guide us as we are fishers of men. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Yes, if we could stand, it's 373, holding in.
as we go from here, sharing his word and loving each other. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.